How different are we? 20 Surprising Cultural Comparisons Between Countries Hello and welcome to Science Telly, the channel where we explore the fascinating world of science and culture. In this video, we are going to compare 20 different aspects of life and society across various countries and regions. How do people greet each other, eat, drink, dress, work, play, and communicate in different parts of the world? How do they view time, space, power, individuality, and uncertainty? How do they celebrate, mourn, and express their emotions? These are some of the questions we will try to answer in this video, based on the research and data from various sources. Let's get started. 1. Greeting. One of the most basic and universal forms of human interaction is greeting. How do people say hello and goodbye in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the context, and the relationship. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, China, and Korea, people bow to each other as a sign of respect and humility. The lower the bow, the more respect is shown. In some European countries, such as France, Spain, and Italy, people kiss each other on the cheek, usually twice, once on each side. The number of kisses may vary depending on the region and the familiarity. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people shake hands and hug each other, sometimes for a long time. The handshake is usually firm and accompanied by eye contact. In some African countries, such as Ghana, Nigeria, and Kenya, people shake hands and snap their fingers, as a way of showing friendship and solidarity. The finger snap is done by sliding the middle finger of one hand against the thumb of the other hand, and then releasing it quickly to make a snapping sound. 2. Eating. Eating is not only a biological necessity, but also a social and cultural activity. How do people eat in different countries? Well, it depends on the food, the utensils, the etiquette, and the customs. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, China, and Korea, people use chopsticks to eat most of their food, especially rice, noodles, and meat. The chopsticks are held in the right hand, and the food is picked up and brought to the mouth. The chopsticks should not be used to point, stab, or spear the food, as these are considered rude. In some European countries, such as France, Germany, and England, people use a knife and a fork to eat most of their food, especially bread, cheese, and meat. The knife is held in the right hand, and the fork is held in the left hand. The food is cut with the knife and then transferred to the mouth with the fork. The knife and fork should not be crossed or placed on the table, as these are considered impolite. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Morocco, Egypt, and Turkey, people use their fingers or a piece of bread to eat most of their food, especially couscous, hummus, and kebab. The food is scooped up with the right hand or the bread, and then brought to the mouth. The left hand should not be used to touch the food, as it is considered unclean. 3. Drinking. Drinking is another essential and enjoyable aspect of human life. How do people drink in different countries? Well, it depends on the beverage, the occasion, the protocol, and the preference. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, China, and Korea, people drink tea as a daily ritual, a social gesture, and a health benefit. The tea is usually served hot, in small cups, and without milk or sugar. The tea should be sipped slowly and quietly, and the cup should be refilled when it is half empty. In some European countries, such as France, Italy, and Spain, people drink wine as a part of their meal, a cultural symbol, and a pleasure. The wine is usually served chilled, in large glasses, and with food. The wine should be swirled, sniffed, and tasted, and the glass should be held by the stem. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people drink coffee as a sign of hospitality, a conversation starter, and a stimulant. The coffee is usually served strong, in small cups, and with sugar. The coffee should be drunk in small sips and with a smile, and the cup should be shaken when it is finished. 4. Dressing. Dressing is a way of expressing one's identity, personality, and style. How do people dress in different countries? Well, it depends on the climate, the religion, the tradition, and the fashion. For example, in some Asian countries, such as India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, People wear colorful and elaborate clothes, such as saris, salwar kameez, and kurta pajama. These clothes are made of cotton, silk, or wool, and are decorated with embroidery, sequins, or beads. 
They reflect the diversity, richness, and vibrancy of the culture. In some European countries, such as France, Italy, and England, people wear simple and elegant clothes, such as suits, dresses, and coats. These clothes are made of wool, linen, or leather, and are tailored to fit the body. They reflect the sophistication, refinement, and class of the society. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people wear modest and conservative clothes, such as abayas, hijabs, and dishdashes. These clothes are made of cotton, polyester, or nylon, and are mostly black, white, or beige. They reflect the religious, moral, and political values of the community. 5. Working. Working is a major and meaningful part of human life. How do people work in different countries? Well, it depends on the economy, the industry, the organization, and the motivation. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, South Korea, and Singapore, people work hard, long, and efficiently. They are driven by the goals of the company, the expectations of the society, and the pride of the self. They value teamwork, loyalty, and harmony. They often work overtime, take few vacations, and have high stress levels. In some European countries, such as Germany, Sweden, and Denmark, people work smart, short, and effectively. They are driven by the quality of the product, the satisfaction of the customer, and the balance of the life. They value innovation, autonomy, and flexibility. They often work remotely, take many breaks, and have low stress levels. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and UAE, people work rich, fast, and ambitiously. They are driven by the wealth of the oil, the growth of the economy, and the vision of the future. They value hierarchy, stability, and security. They often work in large projects, take few risks, and have high aspirations. 6. Playing. Playing is a fun and relaxing way of spending one's leisure time. How do people play in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the sport, the hobby, and the entertainment. For example, in some Asian countries, such as China, India, and Thailand, people play games, such as chess, mahjong, and carom. These games are based on strategy, logic, and skill. They require concentration, patience, and intelligence. They are played indoors, with friends or family, and for fun or money. In some European countries, such as England, Spain, and France, people play sports, such as soccer, rugby, and tennis. These sports are based on speed, strength, and stamina. They require coordination, agility, and fitness. They are played outdoors, with teams or individuals, and for fame or glory. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Turkey, Iran, and Egypt, people play instruments, such as oud, santer, and ney. These instruments are based on melody, rhythm, and emotion. They require talent, practice, and passion. They are played indoors or outdoors, with soloists or bands, and for art or pleasure. 7. Communicating. Communicating is a vital and complex skill of human interaction. How do people communicate in different countries? Well, it depends on the language, the context, the message, and the feedback. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, Korea, and Vietnam, people communicate indirectly, politely, and implicitly. They use high context, low tone, and non-verbal cues. They avoid confrontation, criticism, and contradiction. They seek harmony, respect, and consensus. In some European countries, such as Germany, Switzerland, and Finland, people communicate directly, frankly, and explicitly. They use low context, high tone, and verbal cues. They welcome debate, feedback, and clarification. They seek accuracy, honesty, and efficiency. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people communicate expressively, emotionally, and persuasively. They use high context, high tone, and verbal cues. They appreciate compliments, stories, and gestures. They seek rapport, trust, and influence. 8. Viewing time. Viewing time is a way of perceiving and managing one's schedule, priorities, and deadlines. How do people view time in different countries? Well, it depends on the history, the environment, the lifestyle, and the attitude. For example, in some Asian countries, such as China, Japan, and Singapore, people view time as linear, sequential, and fixed. They view time as linear, sequential, and fixed. 
They follow a strict schedule, plan ahead, and meet deadlines. They value punctuality, efficiency, and productivity. They see time as a scarce and valuable resource that should not be wasted. In some European countries, such as Germany, Switzerland, and Finland, people view time as linear, sequential, and flexible. They follow a general schedule, adapt to changes, and negotiate deadlines. They value reliability, quality, and performance. They see time as a manageable and adjustable resource that should be optimized. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people view time as circular, simultaneous, and relative. They follow a loose schedule, react to events, and postpone deadlines. They value spontaneity, hospitality, and relationships. They see time as a plentiful and variable resource that should be enjoyed. 9. Viewing space. Viewing space is a way of perceiving and organizing one's physical and social environment. How do people view space in different countries? Well, it depends on the geography, the population, the architecture, and the culture. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, Hong Kong, and Singapore, people view space as limited, crowded, and vertical. They live in small, dense, and high-rise buildings. They value privacy, order, and cleanliness. They see space as a scarce and precious commodity that should be used efficiently. In some European countries, such as France, Italy, and Spain, people view space as moderate, spacious, and horizontal. They live in large, spread, and low-rise buildings. They value comfort, beauty, and style. They see space as a sufficient and aesthetic asset that should be used creatively. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Kuwait, people view space as abundant, vast, and flat. They live in huge, isolated, and low-rise buildings. They value luxury, status, and tradition. They see space as a plentiful and symbolic resource that should be used generously. 10. Viewing power. Viewing power is a way of perceiving and distributing one's authority, influence, and status. How do people view power in different countries? Well, it depends on the politics, the economy, the religion, and the values. For example, in some Asian countries, such as China, India, and Indonesia, people view power as hierarchical, centralized, and paternalistic. They have a strong leader, a dominant party, and a loyal followership. They value obedience, loyalty, and harmony. They see power as a top-down and collective phenomenon that should be respected. In some European countries, such as Germany, Sweden, and Denmark, people view power as egalitarian, decentralized, and participative. They have a weak leader, a coalition government, and a critical citizenship. They value democracy, equality, and transparency. They see power as a bottom-up and individual phenomenon that should be challenged. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people view power as authoritarian, centralized, and theocratic. They have a supreme leader, a single religion, and a submissive population. They value faith, obedience, and conformity. They see power as a divine and absolute phenomenon that should be obeyed. 11. Viewing individuality. Viewing individuality is a way of perceiving and expressing one's identity, personality, and goals. How do people view individuality in different countries? Well, it depends on the history, the education, the psychology, and the motivation. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, Korea, and China, people view individuality as secondary, collective, and conforming. They have a long history of group-oriented, hierarchical, and homogeneous societies. They value social harmony, family loyalty, and role fulfillment. They see individuality as a source of conflict, isolation, and shame. In some European countries, such as England, France, and Germany, people view individuality as primary, individual, and unique. They have a long history of individual-oriented, egalitarian, and diverse societies. They value personal freedom, self-expression, and achievement. They see individuality as a source of creativity, innovation, and pride. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people view individuality as mixed, relational, and situational. They have a long history of tribal, religious, and conflictual societies. They value group identity, family honor, and role adaptation. 
They see individuality as a source of strength, survival, and dignity. 12. Viewing uncertainty. Viewing uncertainty is a way of perceiving and coping with one's risks, threats, and opportunities. How do people view uncertainty in different countries? Well, it depends on the environment, the economy, the technology, and the attitude. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, Singapore, and Hong Kong, people view uncertainty as low, predictable, and controllable. They have a stable environment, a prosperous economy, and advanced technology. They value planning, order, and security. They see uncertainty as a challenge, a problem, and a threat. In some European countries, such as Sweden, Denmark, and Norway, people view uncertainty as moderate, variable, and manageable. They have a changing environment, a mixed economy, and a balanced technology. They value flexibility, diversity, and innovation. They see uncertainty as a reality, a possibility, and an opportunity. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Iraq, Syria, and Yemen, people view uncertainty as high, chaotic, and uncontrollable. They have a turbulent environment, a poor economy, and a lagging technology. They value faith, resilience, and survival. They see uncertainty as a fate, a mystery, and a test. 13. Celebrating. Celebrating is a way of enjoying and sharing one's achievements, milestones, and festivals. How do people celebrate in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the religion, the tradition, and the mood. For example, in some Asian countries, such as China, India, and Vietnam, people celebrate with fireworks, lanterns, and dragons. These are symbols of light, luck, and power. They celebrate events such as the Lunar New Year, the Diwali, and the Tet. They value joy, prosperity, and harmony. They see celebrating as a way of honoring the past, welcoming the future, and expressing gratitude. In some European countries, such as France, Italy, and Spain, people celebrate with wine, cheese, and music. These are symbols of taste, culture, and emotion. They celebrate events such as the Bastille Day, the Carnival, and the Tomatina. They value fun, art, and passion. They see celebrating as a way of enjoying the present, sharing the experience, and expressing individuality. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Turkey, people celebrate with dates, nuts, and prayers. These are symbols of sweetness, health, and faith. They celebrate events such as the Eid al-Fitr, the Nowruz, and the Maulid. They value piety, family, and community. They see celebrating as a way of obeying the divine, strengthening the bonds, and expressing generosity. 14. Mourning. Mourning is a way of grieving and coping with one's losses, tragedies, and disasters. How do people mourn in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the religion, the tradition, and the emotion. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, Korea, and Thailand, people mourn with silence, white, and flowers. These are symbols of respect, purity, and peace. They mourn events such as the death of a loved one, a natural disaster, or a national tragedy. They value dignity, acceptance, and calmness. They see mourning as a way of honoring the deceased, letting go of the attachment, and finding solace. In some European countries, such as England, Ireland, and Poland, people mourn with words, black, and candles. These are symbols of expression, sorrow, and hope. They mourn events such as the death of a loved one, a terrorist attack, or a historical injustice. They value empathy, solidarity, and justice. They see mourning as a way of remembering the departed, sharing the grief, and finding closure. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people mourn with tears, green, and flags. These are symbols of emotion, faith, and martyrdom. They mourn events such as the death of a loved one, a war, or a political oppression. They value devotion, sacrifice, and resistance. They see mourning as a way of praising the divine, seeking the reward, and finding strength. 15. Expressing emotions. Expressing emotions is a way of showing and communicating one's feelings, thoughts, and attitudes. How do people express emotions in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the psychology, the personality, and the situation. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, China, and Korea, people express emotions with restraint, subtlety, and context. 
They have a collectivistic, high power distance, and high uncertainty avoidance culture. They value self-control, harmony, and face. They see expressing emotions as a way of maintaining the balance, avoiding the conflict, and saving the reputation. In some European countries, such as Germany, Switzerland, and Finland, people express emotions with moderation, clarity, and logic. They have an individualistic, low power distance, and low uncertainty avoidance culture. They value rationality, honesty, and efficiency. They see expressing emotions as a way of conveying the information, solving the problem, and achieving the goal. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people express emotions with intensity, passion, and context. They have a collectivistic, high power distance, and high uncertainty avoidance culture. They value loyalty, honor, and faith. They see expressing emotions as a way of building the relationship, showing the commitment, and proving the sincerity. 16. Showing humor. Showing humor is a way of amusing and entertaining oneself and others. How do people show humor in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the language, the personality, and the audience. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, China, and Korea, people show humor with irony, understatement, and self-deprecation. They have a high context, indirect, and reserved culture. They value modesty, harmony, and face. They see humor as a way of easing the tension, avoiding the embarrassment, and expressing the criticism. In some European countries, such as England, France, and Germany, people show humor with sarcasm, exaggeration, and satire. They have a low context, direct, and outspoken culture. They value wit, intelligence, and originality. They see humor as a way of challenging the authority, exposing the hypocrisy, and expressing the opinion. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people show humor with anecdotes, metaphors, and parables. They have a high context, indirect, and expressive culture. They value storytelling, wisdom, and morality. They see humor as a way of teaching the lesson, illustrating the point, and expressing the emotion. 17. Showing affection. Showing affection is a way of demonstrating and communicating one's love, care, and attraction. How do people show affection in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the religion, the gender, and the relationship. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, India, and Thailand, people show affection with gestures, gifts, and actions. They have a conservative, traditional, and hierarchical culture. They value respect, duty, and loyalty. They see affection as a way of honoring the elders, supporting the family, and pleasing the partner. In some European countries, such as France, Italy, and Spain, people show affection with words, kisses, and hugs. They have a liberal, romantic, and egalitarian culture. They value passion, expression, and intimacy. They see affection as a way of seducing the lover, complimenting the friend, and embracing the stranger. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Turkey, people show affection with eyes, smiles, and compliments. They have a religious, moral, and segregated culture. They value modesty, purity, and fidelity. They see affection as a way of admiring the beauty, appreciating the character, and respecting the boundary. 18. Showing respect. Showing respect is a way of acknowledging and appreciating one's status, role, and contribution. How do people show respect in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the etiquette, the age, and the situation. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, Korea, and China, people show respect with titles, honorifics, and bows. They have a hierarchical, formal, and polite culture. They value seniority, authority, and humility. They see respect as a way of recognizing the rank, addressing the name, and lowering the head. In some European countries, such as Germany, Sweden, and Finland, people show respect with handshakes, eye contact, and punctuality. They have an egalitarian, informal, and direct culture. They value equality, honesty, and reliability. They see respect as a way of greeting the person, looking at the eye, and being on time. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq, people show respect with salutations, gestures, and hospitality. They have a religious, traditional, and courteous culture. 
They value faith, honor, and generosity. They see respect as a way of saying the greeting, offering the seat, and inviting the guest. 19. Showing curiosity. Showing curiosity is a way of exploring and learning about one's environment, interests, and possibilities. How do people show curiosity in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the education, the curiosity, and the goal. For example, in some Asian countries, such as Japan, Singapore, and Taiwan, people show curiosity with observation, experimentation, and innovation. They have a pragmatic, competitive, and futuristic culture. They value knowledge, excellence, and progress. They see curiosity as a way of discovering the facts, testing the hypotheses, and creating the solutions. In some European countries, such as England, France, and Greece, people show curiosity with questioning, reasoning, and debating. They have a philosophical, critical, and historical culture. They value logic, argument, and evidence. They see curiosity as a way of exploring the ideas, challenging the assumptions, and finding the truth. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Morocco, people show curiosity with storytelling, listening, and traveling. They have a rich, diverse, and ancient culture. They value wisdom, culture, and adventure. They see curiosity as a way of sharing the stories, learning the lessons, and seeing the world. 20. Showing Gratitude Showing gratitude is a way of expressing and appreciating one's benefits, blessings, and opportunities. How do people show gratitude in different countries? Well, it depends on the culture, the religion, the personality, and the recipient. For example, in some Asian countries, such as China, Vietnam, and Philippines, people show gratitude with gifts, favors, and reciprocation. They have a collectivistic, reciprocal, and indebted culture. They value generosity, obligation, and exchange. They see gratitude as a way of giving the present, doing the service, and returning the favor. In some European countries, such as Denmark, Netherlands, and Norway, people show gratitude with words, cards, and donations. They have an individualistic, expressive, and altruistic culture. They value sincerity, recognition, and contribution. They see gratitude as a way of saying the thank you, writing the note, and supporting the cause. In some Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Turkey, people show gratitude with prayers, praises, and blessings. They have a religious, grateful, and spiritual culture. They value faith, gratitude, and grace. They see gratitude as a way of thanking the God, praising the goodness, and wishing the happiness. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more interesting and informative videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Science Telly.